What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. In today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarks on the 2023 M2 powered entry 14 inch MacBook Pro. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. Without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, let me just mention the spec of the model that I am testing in this video. It is the Entry M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, which indeed means it comes with a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, along with 512 gigabytes of SSD based storage. The full spec for the model that I'm using, along with links to purchase this MacBook will be left down below in this video's description. But enough about that, let's get into testing this Mac. The first few benchmarking applications I threw at this MacBook Pro were from Geekbench. The first of these being Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench runs several different tests on this machine and once these tests have been completed, it will then score the machine based on the time taken to complete a task. So on the CPU test here, I got a single core score of 6,794 and when testing the multi-core performance, I got a score of 35,942. I then ran the compute test from Geekbench 4 and when running the OpenGL test, I got a score of 170,800 and 60. And when running the metal compute test, I got a score of 132,549. I then ran Geekbench 5, starting with the CPU test, I got a single core score of 1502, and when testing the multi-core performance, I got a score of 9468. Running the Geekbench 5 compute test, I got an OpenGL score of 38,488, and when testing the metal compute performance, I got a score of 42,699. Running the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6, starting off with their CPU test, I got a single core score of 2,680 and a multi core score of 12,233. Once again, running the OpenGL compute test through Geekbench 6, I got a score of 44,430. And when running the metal compute test, I got a score of 73,888. It is worth noting that a single core CPU score of 2,500 is what you would expect to find from an equivalent 12th gen i7. So on the single core side of things, once again, this MacBook Pro is certainly a very capable machine capable of doing the vast majority of tasks you really want to throw at it. So whether you wanted to throw some photo or video editing or just general processing, this machine is certainly very capable. And so sticking with the trend of testing the CPU performance, I then ran Cinebench R23. When running this test, I got a single core score of 1,642 and a multi-core score of 11,845, which gives us a ratio of 7.21. The next application I ran on this MacBook Pro was NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench runs several different tests on all aspects of the machine, from storage, GPU, CPU, and even the memory. For this test, I got a score of 2,482. I then tested the storage on this MacBook Air and whilst I was hopeful to see some improvements, there really wasn't any. Coming in with a write speed of 3705 megabytes per second, whilst it's certainly fast and faster than you know the M2 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, compared to the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pro models, it simply is not. In fact, I got a read speed of 2,563 megabytes per second on this brand new 2023 14-inch MacBook Pro, whereas my MacBook Pro from two years ago gave me a read speed of 4,913 megabytes per second, which means this newer model is around two times as slow when it comes to reading files from the SSD, at least when compared to the 14-inch MacBook Pro from 2021. I then wanted to see how well this machine would perform graphically and so I ran GFX Bench Metal. Now I will be calculating the average for the higher and lower intensive tasks while I will be showing you each individual result. 
So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 403.48 frames per second. Whereas for those graphical tasks that were less intense, I got a score of 329.54 frames per second. Sticking to testing the GPU portion of the M2 Pro, I ran several tests from 3D Mark. Starting off with the wildlife test, which honestly was quite useless, as it maxed out this test with it clocking in a maxed out score and an average FPS of 120 frames per second. And when running the wildlife stress test, once again, the best and the lowest score that I got was 20,040. So it's quite consistent across the board when you're looking at playing games around that 1080p mark. So to increase the testing by just a little, I chose to run the Wildlife Extreme Test, which runs this test at 1440p. Now for this test, I got a score of 11,121 with it clocking in 66.6 .6 frames per second on average. So it's quite clear to see, especially when comparing this test on the M2 versus the M2 Pro, that these additional graphics scores are clearly having a difference, with the M2 coming in at 41 frames per second, whereas the M2 Pro within this MacBook Pro came in at 66.6 .6 frames per second. I then ran the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, which runs the Wildlife Extreme Test, but only this time on a continuous loop up to 20 times. So when running this test, the best score that we got here was 11,137 and the lowest we got was 11,099. So this test is actually quite impressive, especially when you consider that this is being run 20 times consecutively back to back and the drop in performance isn't even half a percent. It's, it's impressive. Hey, if you are still watching this video, then be sure to subscribe, clicking that bell icon to be notified when a new video goes live. As I say, there is a lot of videos coming out very soon, and we'll be comparing all of these Macs to other machines. So hit that subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified, to be one of the first people to see those videos when they go live. Sticking with the theme of testing the graphics on this machine, I then chose to run the Unigen Benchmarking Tools Heaven and Valley tests. And whilst running the Heaven benchmark, I got an average FPS of 105.1 frames per second with a score of 2,647. And when running the Valley test, I got a score of 5,226 and an FPS score of 124.9 frames per second. So it's interesting to see when running that test on this M2 Pro based MacBook Pro versus the M2 chip found in the other 13 inch MacBook Pro that the graphics performance was almost a one to one doubling in performance. I then ran the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark at 2560 by 1600, which rendered out 5847 frames with an average FPS of 37. When I lowered the resolution to 1920 by 1200, it managed this time to render 9,272 frames with an average FPS of 59. I then ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 7,627. When running Blender on this MacBook Pro to render the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 9 minutes and 42 seconds to complete. Whereas when using the GPU of the M2 Pro on this MacBook Pro, it took 2 minutes and 23 seconds to complete. And when using the CPU to render the BMW scene, it took 4 minutes and 1 second to complete. Whereas when using the GPU, it took 1 minute and 6 seconds to complete this. I then did a timed Final Cut Pro export, which exported a 5 minute 24 second video file to H.264. It is worth knowing for this test, background rendering was turned off. So when exporting the file as a Full HD video project, it took 44 seconds to complete, whereas when exporting as a 4K video project, it took 2 minutes and 37 seconds to complete this. I then ran a network speed test and got a download speed of 378 megabits per second and an upload speed of 84 megabits per second. I then ran the Antutu HTML benchmark and got a score of 74,040, which wasn't too bad. And when running the speedometer 2.0 HTML test, I got a score of 421. 
So that'll be it for today's video. Of course, I have got loads of videos planned and the next video I upload will showcase what it's like to play a handful of games on this system. If you have got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in this video's description or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.